Hello class, uh, my name is Ryan Douglas. I'm your instructor for uh, BA 250 Personal Finance here at Grantham. Um, so I, th I thought I'd just go ahead and introduce myself um, for the first week and, and kind of let you know what some of my plans are for the class. Um, this is a, a subject I'm very uh, uh, I'm, I'm very excited about. Uh, I really enjoy talking about this. Um, I bore my wife to tears. <laughs> I, I can, if I find someone else in a, in a room that can, um, that enjoys this topic, then I can really, um, I can really clear out a room because uh, me and me and the other individual we talk about personal finances and investing and how to how, tax strategies. And a lot of people get bored with it and they'll actually, you know, just leave the room. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm, I, I know that this is a required class. So some of you may not um, uh, be as excited about this topic as I am, um, but I do. I, I, I firmly do believe that you have to understand finances and money um, to be comfortable um, and, and live a uh, 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 live a comfortable life. Um, because it's uh, the reason why is because it's needed. Yeah, you have to have money, and um, it's it's and money is finite. Um, there's only some of it so much of it to go around and um, so learning how to manage it uh, to your benefit uh, to for your life uh, and especially if you have kids or if you have someone that's dependent upon you it's absolutely essential that you do it and and because um, they're depending on you and, and that money is is there to um, help you provide for them um, for food clothing and, and uh, then also for for luxury items and then later on for their education so with that, I'm going to work really hard um, to help you understand uh, understand finances. I've read a lot of books on finances. Um, I have a degree in accounting. Uh, I, have, I have an MBA from a school called Northwest Missouri State University. Uh, 2013 uh, Division II National Champions go Bearcats. So anyway, with this, um, some of the books, some of the books I've read, and I'll, I'll send out a list later in the class. But one of the the probably the two best books on personal finances that are out there that if you read these you'll really be very knowledgeable as far as uh, as far as finances go and that is going to be um, the millionaire um, mind or the mil or I'm sorry the millionaire next door um, uh, the millionaire next door by Thomas Stanley and uh, something something Bucklow I forgot his his uh, his last name anyway but the book is called um, the Millionaire Next Door, and then the sequel to that was The Millionaire Mind. Um, so, but anyway, The Millionaire Next Door, that's the best book you can read as far as personal finances. And then probably the second I would say would be The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. Um, it's a lot of, uh, uh, The Total Money Makeover is a lot of real world uh, application stuff. That book goes into a lot more detail, uh, but covers the same subjects we're going to cover in this class, but in greater detail. Uh, the Millionaire Next Door, it basically talks about the lifestyles of the typical millionaire in America and ha what they look like, um, what their family is, what they did for a l what they do for a living, um, where do they live, uh, what time do they get up in the morning, um, what do they do on the weekends, um, what type of house do they live in? It covers all those subjects, and it's probably not what most people are thinking. Most people are used to seeing on TV the glitz and the glamour, and you know people like uh, um, like a Warren Buffett and Jay Z and Bill Gates and uh, Fifty Cent. You know he's he's actually very wealthy and actually manages his money very well. But those those are more of anomalies. Those are not the norm. Those are not the normal rich, wealthy people in this country. Most wealthy people you probably wouldn't be able to to pick out in a crowd. Um, they they uh, live uh, very modestly. They um, they live comfortably, but they're very content in in living a in a normal size house. Um, in in America in in terms of of the American standard and. They drive, you know, American-made automobiles, and they have normal clothes, and uh, so it's it's just not what you're thinking. And and the millionaire mind does a great job at at, at kind of depicting this. So those are some good books. So let's just go ahead, and I'll tell you kind of what we're going to be covering in this class. So the first week is is uh, in the in the class is titled "Create an Individual Financial Roadmap, Roadmap and Prepare a Beginning Budget." And this week's lecture is just really going to be more about um, more about a, um, an introduction and to let you know what the class is covering. So really, there's nothing here <coughs> as far as new material goes. 
and um, the second week is going to be budgeting. So, in order to to capture money and keep money, so a lot of people make money, right? A lot of people know how to make it. Um, if you don't know how to make it, you you'll learn that in other classes, and I, I'll teach you a little bit of that in here. <coughs> and one way to make or one way to make sure that you hang on to the money that you make is you have a budget. Those who do not keep track of money uh, are doomed to lose it. So uh, you, uh, in order, so if you keep track of the money, you understand that's finite, that there's only so much of it to go around, and you tr and um, you you make sure that you keep on top of what you're spending. You'll be very uh, mindful of what you are spending and very mindful about what you're putting back in savings. And so that all starts with a budget. So there's two types of budgets, really. There's the fixed income, and then there's the inconsistent income. So if you're like a small business owner, or a real estate agent, or something like that, and you you it, or a contractor, and your income kind of goes up and down from month to month, you'll learn how to budget with that. Um, then week three, savings and investment planning. So how much should you save versus how much should you invest? Okay, and why should you do each of those? And then also there's debt, uh, there's debt um, and credit. That's uh, so basically taking out loans and and everything. And I'm going to teach you how debt is a bad thing, and you should stay away from it as much as possible. Um, that being said, I have a little bit of debt that I'm, I'm still paying off. I'm trying to get rid of it as fast as possible. Um, taxes and insurance. So what taxes do you need to worry about and, and what goes into planning? I mean, it's probably not as complicated as you think it is. Um, a lot of people make a big to-do about how complicated taxes are, and they're not that complicated for the common layperson. But of course, I don't run you know multi-million dollar corporations overseas <clears throat> and I don't have any offshore accounts. I just have a standard bank account. I, I make a salary. Um, I do a little bit of charitable contributions. Um, I pay property taxes, and so we'll t we'll talk about how, like, the, just the common layperson, how how we can do some some tax planning, and then also what insurance plan should you have? So it is possible to have. You need to have insurance for for a number of things, but it's very possible to ha be overinsured. And there's also certain uh, insurance plans that you just need to stay away from. And so we'll talk about that. Investing in the stock market. So a lot of people aren't comfortable with the stock market. I'm going to get you comfortable with it. Um, I'm going to teach you that it's not a scam. Um, it is a scam if you if you do it for the short term. It's not a scam if you're a long term investor, which is what everyone should be. And we'll talk about the different types of investments in the stock markets and what you need to look for in a company in order to make sure that you're doing a good investment. And then also uh, retirement planning uh, and estate planning. So this is basically how you're going to retire and then what you're going to leave behind for your next of kin. Okay, so for example, I have a daughter. Um, she's she's one. <laughs> so it's... Um, uh, but I've already started estate planning with her. Uh, I have a life insurance policy that will cash out. I have a little bit of savings. I have some equity built up in my home. Um, I have both my cars are paid off. And so, uh, if something was to happen to my wife and I, say that her her and I were to be uh, um, um, killed in a car accident, and my daughter <clears throat> was left behind, you know, we we have things set up for, for people to take care of her. We have money set aside for, for those people to utilize in, in raising her. And so that would be estate planning. <clears throat> Retirement is basically, everyone's going to retire, right? Because everyone gets old. It's just life. I mean, that's just how it is. And so we're, we we need a plan for that. We need a plan for when we get old and, um, and we don't want to work anymore. And also, why would you want to work for 30 years just so you could work more, right? If you're going to work, you know, a career of 20 to 30 years or however long, then you want to have some sort of reward at the end of it, right? At, at, towards, towards, uh, t you know, towards your golden years. And so how to, so don't, don't put in all those years of, of work and then not be able to retire. That's just complete that's just ridiculous, okay? So we need to find out how we plan for retirement. I'm going to teach you how to do that. And I'm also, so I know a lot about these subjects. I don't plan to be, or I don't I don't pretend that I am all-knowing about them either, okay? But I do know of resources out there that you can refer to uh, that will make you all-knowing on it. Or these people do know quite a bit of information and can show you stuff. And I will tell you who to stay away from too um, because there are some uh, shysters out there. So, and then week eight, we're just going to go over an overview of everything we covered and kind of wrap things up. So anyway, um, again, my name is Ryan Douglas. Um, uh, feel free to email me. Hit me up on Ask the Instructor uh, within the classroom. If you have any questions about how to operate the classroom, email me. Uh, call me. My phone number is listed all over the class. 
Um, the phone number is 913-309-4744. Um, my email address is rdouglas, so R-D-O-U-G-L-A-S, the number three, at grantham.edu. So uh, keep the questions coming. Um, I'm looking forward to this class and teaching everybody a bunch of information. So um, see you all on the uh, thread discussions. All right, bye.